How's the hair? A little roosterish. Let me see. Got a little boo. Hey, listen, we got to be professional on our pod. Mm. Yep. Ooh, there's an mm. Quit with the uh. Yeah. No, that's no more. <laughs> Big week this week, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about? What's so big? <laughs> Got her in the house. <laughs> well, we can't say that on the pod. Oh, are we live? We're live. Oh. We'll have to bleep, 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 bleep. Also, we went live yesterday. That's really big. That is big. Yeah. So should we get started? Yeah, let's get into it. I guess it's go time. Welcome to now episode two with Courtney Twist and Michelle Roderick with the Twist Realty Group. Hey girl. How you like that? Love it. It's official. We've launched this podcast as of yesterday. It went live. Mm-hmm. We've received enormous amount of feedback, positive. Mostly and, positive. Yeah. And areas of improvement, which we already knew. Which we wanted. It's our first one, right? learning we're learning <laughs> yeah, we are it's been great though um we've definitely received a lot of items for us to cover in this podcast and bring additional value to you and your business and a lot of the things we've been hearing about is investment properties yes yes yeah. so we decided today we're going to hit up uh the airbnb market let's talk about that it's something that my husband and I have had quite a bit of experience on, so I'm excited to share some insight. Yeah, this girl is definitely not afraid of taking risks. So why don't you share them a little bit about your history with getting into Airbnbs? Well, we, for those of you that don't know, we live in Mariposa, California, which is outside Yosemite National Park. So the short-term rental market has been around for quite a while in our area. And my husband and I bought our first rental back in 2015. And it was actually an off-market property. Uh, We knew who the owner was and we ended up contacting them um, and made a deal. And it was kind of actually, I might go into that just a little bit, unique financing that we did to purchase it because it was not in a financeable condition. And we've actually done that a few times with some of the properties that we've bought over the years. What what was not financeable about it specifically? Well, it was a duplex and the current owner had fixed up the upstairs, but it wasn't to our taste. Um, so there was, but there was still just minimal that we needed to do to get that unit ready. But the downstairs was a basement unit and it was really bad. I mean, it looked like we were in the ruins in Italy. <laughs> Our contractor didn't know what to do with it. Uh, he, I think he even advised us not to buy the property, but Jared and I saw the vision. Well, I saw the vision and Jared figured out how the hell to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually picked that property up for 80000 Can you believe it? But you know, I didn't see it when you first saw the, the property. So I didn't, I, that's kind of a bummer. Well, and that one, boy, we put a lot of sweat equity into yeah. it. So what I ended up doing was actually reaching out to a previous client to see if they would carry a note for us with 0% down and with the condition being that we had one year to get them paid back. So we had the clock ticking from the get-go to get that both units up and running, rentable, um, and able Making to some money. Yeah, to refinance that property so we could pay off that loan. So that's how we first got into the Airbnb market. What's and- the interest rate on that? Do you remember? Ooh. Like what was it? What was in it for them? You- it was a low interest rate. They actually they hooked us up. I want to say five, maybe mm-hmm. I'd have to go back and look. Not bad. It wasn't too bad yeah. for the time. So Yeah. So we, the first season, we wanted to manage it ourselves. We wanted to clean it ourselves. Uh, We felt like we needed to understand the process before we outsourced it. We actually, with our three girls, even stayed the night just to each in each unit, just to make sure that everything was working. And for example, like we had a brand new toaster, didn't work. And we wouldn't have known that. So we were our own little guinea pigs and we've had 
uh, other people now, friends, stay in our units as we roll each of them out, just to make sure that all the kinks are worked out before we go live and we have paying guests. It was a good location too. Yeah, it was right in town in Mariposa. It was near the bus where you could catch up to Yosemite National Park. Um, so we, you know, our focus has always been walkability and having units that, you know, could get you to restaurants or into the attraction, which in our case is Yosemite. I'm having flashbacks now as we're having this conversation <laughs> with the- Of the cottages. Of the cottages, but the- um, <laughs> The taxes, the TOT taxes. I just realized I used to do those for you. You did. It was all on paper. Oh my gosh. Fill it out. And the running the reports. That was like pulling teeth for me. I'm I'm glad that you did that for us. I forgot about that. I literally just remembered when I'm thinking about that. That's when Michelle building. was my assistant way back yeah, when. It was um and you were using VRBO initially. Yes. And they didn't withhold the taxes. <laughs> Remember? Yes, I do remember. So we did Airbnb and Verbo, VRBO at the same time. We even had hotels.com for a little bit there. And then I don't know if it was our, it must've been the first year because I was managing it or mismanaging it. I should say <laughs> when I was on my way to my daughter's birthday party at the pizza parlor and realized that I had double booked like multiple guests staying that same weekend most of them coming from Europe. Can you imagine that? Well, yeah, I can. That's what happens when Courtney mismanages stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was so but stressful. You pivoted and took care of it. Well, luckily I had a lot of friends in the industry. Mm -hmm. So I called everyone I knew at the time that had a vacation rental and said, do you have any availability? And of course, rehouse the guests uh, and it all ended well. But let me tell you, that was stressful. And it was probably soon after that when I hired our manager who we've had ever since and okay. is excellent. Well, um, also before we move on, um, I believe you had the crisis of the Detweiler fire. True. So you've had to manage. We have had to manage multiple crisis fire situations, you know, living in the mountains, um, pick your poison and ours is fire for our mm -hmm. area. So we've come a long way since the beginning of having a, a rental that's just sitting there and mm -hmm. not making you any money where you go from nine, ten thousand dollars a month revenue to zero. So that was stressful. Detweiler was definitely an example of that, although we were able to house um, fire victims uh, there and kind of give back to the community, mm -hmm. which was awesome. You know, now we have a hotel with 11 units. We also have an agreement with Cal Fire where we can house fire firefighters, PG&E employees that as well. Working. Yeah. People that are working for the, the emergency personnel, but great. that was, you know, part of our strategy. What would you say that when you and Jared started exploring mm -hmm. the path to Airbnb investments would be like the most critical factors when choosing a particular Airbnb? Well, I think the number one critical factor is making sure that you have a good manager and group of cleaners. And so whether that manager is yourself or someone else, you got to make sure that they are just rock rock stars. And even more importantly are the cleaners. So we have had the same cleaners literally since 2015 we've just expanded and added more to the team and they're managed through our manager and they are excellent. They're super reliable. They are very thorough. We pay them very well, um, but it's so crucial. And there's many areas where, you know, the homes are there and they look beautiful and you feel like you could pick up and buy one and just get going. But if you don't have uh, cleaners, I mean, I would recommend you don't buy. Literally, if you do not have a manager or cleaners in place, I wouldn't invest in that property or that area. What about, I know you've coached me on looking at investment properties mm -hmm. by doing some research on what uh, Airbnbs like nearby the specific location are going for for each night and using air DNA and yes. things like that. Why don't you talk about like profiling, I guess? Well, so I am partial to locations that are near national parks. Um, I look in other states. I've yet to pull the trigger on any investments in other states, but just ask my husband. My hobby is is looking on Zillow 
on the weekends as we're lounging in the morning and just kind of dreaming and figuring out, understanding the markets. And I tend to gravitate to ones that are outside national parks. And I do this because I do feel like they are a little bit recession proof. And, you know, being someone that's been self-employed, uh, being in real estate throughout the recession, we talked about this in our first episode, while I'm not av- adverse to risk, and I do take a very calculated risk mm-hmm. and we do have a little PTSD as far as making sure we have enough savings and money in the bank. So I'm always trying to think through when we're looking at something as investment, how, you know, we'll make us money. Number one as a short-term rental. Will it make us money if we flip it to say midterm or long-term rental? And is it the type of price point where we'll still be okay if we were to, to lower it when the economy is bad? And so we tend to buy smaller properties, usually two bedrooms or less. Um, Again, so it keeps that price point at a a level that will work in all economies. And we've also found them to be just as profitable as larger ones. I mean, not significantly larger, but a three bedroom versus a two bedroom or, you know, having just a couple guests versus having a family, our hotels are really geared towards two guests, not families like our old one. And they have had a higher profit margin, surprisingly, than our previous investment. So that's one thing that we look for as far as the location goes. It's got to have, you know, something, whether it's a hospital, a hospital, maybe a military base. Um, what's the attraction that's bringing people there? And how are the regulations, right? There's a lot of talk about that. I know where we live, um, there's been some studies that they're doing and, you know, trying to do moratoriums and, you know, that's been happening in a lot of different areas. So if you're going to invest somewhere, it's, you really need to be with a, a realtor or a manager that knows what those regulations look like and, or if they anticipate any coming anytime soon. Yeah. People think it's pretty easy buy a property and slap it on air Airbnb and, mm-hmm. and rent it out and don't realize what's really involved. Well, it's it's a full-time job, or at least it can be. You know, our long-term rentals, those are passive. That's a, a passive income. There might be, you know, repairs or things that you need to do over the years, but a short-term rental is hands-on. It is like having another business. We have a separate corporation for it and we run it like a business. So that is important to know, and you need to know those numbers. Um, you mentioned AirDNA, and that's a good tool that people can use. It kind of lets you know what your competition, like what the average is per night, what the vacancy rates are. It does cost money. So if you are looking to invest in multiple areas or multiple states, it can get expensive to subscribe. So I found a little workaround. It doesn't give you as much of the data, but I'm a fan of Bigger Pockets. It's a podcast that I listen to. Mm-hmm. And they have quite a few tools on their website, including a partnership with AirDNA. So if you sign up for their membership, you get all their tools and you can plug in addresses and they'll shoot back what an average uh, annual return would be. It doesn't have all the analytics, but at least gives Something. you that. So when I'm looking in Tennessee, North Carolina, Texas, you know, California, I don't have to pay by market. So that's been kind of my little cheat. (laughs) So there was a time when the first Twist Realty office was in Bootjack. Bootjack? Bootjack. That's what, 10 minutes from downtown proper Mariposa. Mm -hmm. That's our, that's where the first office was. And then we went to Oakhurst and then we went to Clovis and there was like this desire of, gosh, it would really be great to be part of the downtown scene of historic Mariposa. If you haven't been here, it's very charming, okay. right? Oh, it's so cute. And there was this like, ooh, what if we had a office in downtown Mariposa? And what did you do to, <laughs> to acquire where we are sitting today? Well, my husband and I were trying to think of what could potentially work for an office and or investment opportunity in downtown Mariposa, and there was nothing on the market at that time. So he asked about an office that had previously had a real estate company in there, not realizing that it was actually connected to a hotel. So he went out of town, I think it was Nashville for a convention or something. 
And literally within a day, I had reached out to the owner via Facebook and said, you know, hey, uh, we're just wondering if you'd be open to selling. We're looking to buy. And I, I think by the time he got back, like we had already <laughs> had, the, had some of those details worked out. And she was, yeah, she was open to it. And she loved the idea of, um, you know, lo a local purchasing it, but it did need, it definitely needed some work. How many units? So we have 11 short-term units. And while it is zoned as a hotel, which is awesome, by the way, because we just had to do an amendment uh, in regards to the ownership and we didn't have to go through the full TOT process, which can be pretty rigorous depending on what area that you're in. Um, but yes, we have 11 units. We have one tenant, uh, Miriam, who's our resident greeter, and she's lived here for decades. She's in her 90s. So she hangs out here with us uh, where we also have one of our, you know, Twist Really group offices. She brings us candy. She does bring us some fudge. Yeah. <laughs> Which we politely accept and say thank you. And try not to eat. Yep. Got to watch our figures. <laughs> yeah. This is true. That's another podcast. So you and Jared and the boys, the ranch fence boys, even Carissa, Carissa, I remember seeing her sanding floors and Bailey and lots of sweat, sweat equity put in. You talk about that a little bit. Well, when we bought the property, we actually inherited four tenants that were living here full time in the units. And unfortunately, one of them had it made cause a fire in the unit within a month of us owning it. Of course, it's the middle of the night when this happens. And it was, it was so stressful. My husband was working out of town. We get the call. And fortunately, you know, the firefighters were all over it and they were able to contain it to the one unit, which was awesome because we had four Airbnb units going upstairs pretty much. And then four long-term tenants there at the same time. So it was one of the Airbnb guests that actually alerted us that there was smoke and something was going on. So I come over there and it's literally day one for my brand new assistant, Carissa, who now helps us with our marketing. And I said, all right, wear something old. And her and my teenage daughter and I had to clean up drenched, soggy, soot covered debris from the apartment as the firefighters just cleared it all out and put it on our patio. And I'm like, we have, we got to get going. This yes. is the summer. Yep. It's our investment. We have bookings coming up. We got to get this thing cleared up. So I literally like bought a tarp and we moved all that yeah, stuff left. on it, covered it up, got it all looking good. And we just, we were able roll. to roll. We were able to roll and keep those, the short-term guests going. So it can definitely come with stressors. Um, but after that point, we renovated five rooms that summer during peak season, uh, which was a lot, plus managing three other companies. So it was quite busy. Yep. We got those done. And then we did a second wave where we were able to renovate the rest of the units, which has been so much fun because yeah. each room is a different theme. Yep. So the design side of me just loves that. And it's all that 1930s charm. It's really fun. Yeah, it's super cute. And yeah. you, you guys have done a really great job. Well, um, any other insights or tips or, you know, a lot of people are going to listen to this mm -hmm. and feel like maybe a little bit of intimidation, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like, you just make it look so easy and it sounds a little bit easy, but it's definitely not. Yeah. So what would you say to those that are listening that, that want to even attempt to accomplish one investment mm -hmm. property, maybe this year? Well, I am, even with the challenges that we've had, I'm still a big fan. I don't think, you know, Airbnb specifically, I don't think it's going away. Uh, I think it's a, it's a strong model that it can thrive. Um, I also believe in the hotel model and that's why I kind of have it best of both worlds. I'm a, definitely a fan of the old hotels that you fix up and then you utilize the tools that you have, just like our real estate brokerage utilizes the tools of eXp 
I'm using the tools of Airbnb. And I do think that there's a lot of value in that model. And I believe in building wealth through the short-term rental market. I do think that there's costs associated sometimes more so with the short-term market than with the long-term rentals. So some of the things that you're going to want to think about that you're going to have right up front when you first buy it is at least in our area, there's certain inspections and um, in inspections and reports and stuff that you have to provide to get approved, including a septic inspection, a well inspection. For our county, our building department has a really extensive list of items that need to be taken care of with the primary focus, I believe, being on safety for fire risk. You know, for example, are the windows large enough where a firefighter can fit through with his backpack or her backpack on? So, you know, our first unit, we actually had to cut into cement walls to make a larger window. And it's not something that we would have thought to do um, without, you know, the guidance of the county, I guess you could say. So, there can be expenses around that hair handrails, you know, are the, the stairs mm -hmm. large enough yeah. they meet code, all those kind of things. Um, and then of course you have to furnish it. So we've gotten creative over the years with our first two units. We didn't have a whole lot of cash. We were coming off of saving money, you know, digging ourselves out of a hole of the recession. We were saving to build our house and we pivoted to take advantage of this opportunity with that duplex, but we didn't have an extra 10, 20 grand to throw at each unit. So we went to Habit Habitat for Humanity Restores. Uh, we found a place in Fresno that bought furniture from hotels when they were remodeling. I remember that. And we were able to get things like pennies on the dollar as far as furniture, you know, the dressers, the thing the TVs go on um, lamps. I mean, you name it, they had it and, and we bought it, pull out couches and you, and you recycled it. We recycled <laughs> it and we were able to furnish both of those units pretty darn inexpensively, primarily from that. And then fast forward now with the hotel, we're at a little bit different level as far as income goes. Um, but we have partnered with, you know, different resources. One's called host GPO. And it's a site that you like a co-op that you can join and get discounts on things, um, whether it's your soaps or, uh, you know, toiletries, coffee, that sort of thing, or furniture. They have discounts for RugsUSA.com, Pottery Barn, West Elm, Home Depot. So that's been a really cool thing that we can take advantage of now that we have more units. So maybe, maybe get in touch with someone that knows everything you just said. Cause those are all like, that's all really daunting to be like, Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about a window being large enough or you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot. I feel like if, if you're trying to do this, it's almost better to consult with someone like yourself. Well, definitely, you know, as far as that part goes, it can be part of your due diligence. Uh, I think most of the city and counties have these things online where you can see it. If you are working with a realtor that's savvy with short-term rentals, which I recommend, um, they can help guide you through that process. Uh, don't let it deter you. <laughs> it can be a lot of fun. Yes, it could be some work, but here we are almost 10 years in and definitely thriving with it. Great. Well, that's um, probably enough for today. We should maybe chat about what's to come. I know we've got some exciting stuff in the works specifically, I believe what, two weeks from now. Yeah. We've got the, well, the number one top producer for the central Valley of California, Sarah Hedrick coming on. And along with Sarah, we have Amanda Miller joining us, another powerhouse. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. We're going to have a lot of fun. So definitely stay tuned for tips from them on how to build up your production. You know, this market has been tough. Mm -hmm. And yep. these ladies know how to get it done. I can't wait for that. So impressive. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening, everybody, to our second episode of Now. We appreciate your support. And feel free to share this with your friends and family. And we'll catch you next time. Yeah. Follow us. Follow us on Instagram. We tend to post different steps. And uh, you can see glimpses of our hotel, Tourist Homes in Mariposa on there. So Make sure you uh, reach out and give us a holler. Bye. Bye.